All right, in this video, I'm going to assume that you know how to create a simple C program and you can do basic uh, input and output with uh, the terminal, standard input and standard output. I'm going to build on that and we're going to look at how we can format floating point numbers when we're printing them uh, to the screen as well as uh, an introduction to file output. So if you'll take a look here, I've already created a file called fff.c which stands for Fancy Formatting and File Output. And it's just a simple skeleton file that I can quickly uh, build upon for this, this demonstration. Okay, so to begin with, I'm just going to create a floating point value. I'm going to initialize it to 0 0.3 for instance. And we're going to look at ways that we can print this out. So up until now, we have seen how we could um, use a, a format string to, to print a, a bunch of words with uh, using format specifiers to also print values. So I'm going to do the same thing here, but then we're going to build on it. So we'll just say this is a floating point number. And we will first start by making sure that we know how to print this out. Okay, don't want to forget to specify the variable that goes along with the format specifier here. And we will go ahead and write that. and try to build it and run it. Okay, so here we see that we can print a floating point number. No big deal, we've done this before. Let's build on this a little bit. So floating point numbers, the whole point of using a floating point number is so that we can get some fractional precision. So there's a less than one portion to the number we're trying to represent. But how much or how much, excuse me, how much accuracy we're able to display for that number, this can vary. So I'm going to show you in a moment that though I've assigned the value of 0 0.3 to this floating point number, a float, I've not actually stored 0 0.3 in that value. And this has to do with the, the fact that I have a, a finite number of bits that I can use to represent numbers. And so it turns out that the decimal value 0.3 doesn't fit real well in a binary floating point value. And so when I print to the screen the, the value for this variable, it looks like all is well and it's storing 0.3, but we're gonna see that actually if we can look at the number closer and increase the amount of precision, we'll see that it's actually doing some rounding. In addition, it's nice to be able to control how many decimal, excuse me, how many values beyond the decimal place are shown for a particular number. This can be useful for trying to line up things, like we're printing a table of, of, uh, of dollar amounts, for instance, where it's typical to have two points past the decimal and so forth. So uh, what I want to show you now is ways that we can modify the way that a floating point number is displayed. So I'm going to begin by first indicating sign. So if I add a plus after the uh, percent, but before the F, this will cause printf to always show a plus or a minus when the value is displayed. Now minus, you know, negative sign, that would have been done if the number was negative, but adding this plus here will cause it to also display, let's do this, a positive symbol or a plus, excuse me, if the value is positive. So it's, it's more explicit. So let's just go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, so now we see that there's, there's the plus in front. So that might be useful. So that's one way that we can control the appearance here. All right, let's go a little bit further. So let's say that I'd like to specify uh, just how many positions past the decimal that I'd like to show. The way I can do this is by putting a wrong character. Let's see here, insert, there we go. Uh, by putting a decimal point in, in the format string here, and then indicating the number of positions. So I'm going to put two and we'll save this and see what happens. Okay. 
Okay, so there you can see that now I've got uh, two digits worth of precision past the decimal point. All right, what else can we do? So turns out that I can also control the width of the number in general, how many positions are being used to display it. And the way I can do that is I can place a value in front of the decimal point. So here I'm going to specify uh, that I'd like to see, I'm going to reserve 10 spaces uh, for printing this number. All right, so now you'll notice that there's quite a bit more space here. And that's because it's going to go ahead and write justify this number by default and simply pad it with blank space if we don't have enough digits to display. Now there are a lot of these different modifiers and it's always a good idea to remember, I don't want fprintf yet, I want printf, that we have resources we can use to learn things on our own. So here I'm visiting C++ again c++.com and if you look closely down here in the description under parameters there is information about the various flags that we can set so for instance we can left justify uh, instead of doing right justification which is the default and so forth so I'll leave it to you to dig in further and, and see if there are other neat things here that you can do I am going to show one more modifier that we can use in just a minute but before I do that um, I want to talk to you about files. So right now we're printing to, to the console, to standard out. And though that's useful, there are times that that's not what we want to do. We want to be able to store data in a file to be able to use later on and so forth. So let's talk about that now. Happily, standard IO comes with all of the stuff that we need in order to write to files. So basically, I just need to show you, show you the code for that. Now, writing to files in C involves using something called a file pointer. And so this looks a little different than most of the things we'll do. We capitalize the word file in this case, and then we say we want to uh, create a pointer of this type. So file, file pointer, I'm going to call it, um, we'll just call it output file. All right, so now I have this file pointer variable and I'm going to initialize it to a file that I'm going to try to open and so the functional use for that is fopen. fopen takes a couple of arguments. The first one is going to be the name of the file as a string that I'm trying to open. So I'm going to open a file called fancy formatted.txt. Now in addition to opening the file I need to tell this function the mode that I'd like to open it in. Am I trying to read to it? Am I trying to write to it, etc. So again, this is, oh, that's not what we want. Again, this is a opportunity to go to c++.com and learn a bit about this or hit the man pages, whatever you'd like to do. Um, but if I search for this function f open, I see that there are several different modes that I can use when opening a file. So I'll leave it to you to read about all the details for those. I'm just going to show that I want to open this file to write to it. So I will put a W inside of double quotes. Okay, now, how do I actually go about writing to this file once it's been opened? Well, I'm going to need to use this, this file pointer. And I'll use it with a different function. Instead of using printf, I'm going to use fprintf. So fprintf works just like printf, but we need to add one extra argument before the format string, and that's going to be a file pointer. So I'll put output file, and then the rest of the string. Now, when I go to open a file, it's important to understand that if the file exists, then that's the file that will be opened by fopen. If it doesn't exist, then fopen will attempt to create the file. In this case, the file doesn't exist yet, so fopen is going to create it for us. So let's go ahead and write this file, write these changes, I should say, and we'll build this and run it again. Now, if I do an ls, you'll see that there's this file names and ages. And so instead of seeing that is the wrong file, <laughs> pardon me, this file fancy formatted, that's what I wanted. If we take a look at fancy formatted, that's the file we just wrote to, we see the string that we printed. All right, 
Let's see what else we can do. Go ahead and get into insert mode here. Can't seem to get to the end of that line. There we go. Okay. All right. One other thing I wanted to show. Two other things, I guess, actually. First, I want to show uh, that I can, in addition to setting the precision with a constant value, so this is one other neat thing we can do with, with fprintf, instead of using a constant here, I can actually also use a wildcard. So if I put a star, then this says that um, previous to the argument that is supposed to be printed by this modifier, I will be providing another value. Okay, what do I mean by that? So here's a float. This is the value that's going to actually be printed by this percent %f with all this other junk in front of it. So before putting a float, I need to provide then uh, a value that will be placed inside, or excuse me, that will be inserted uh, effectively where this star is at. So I'll be saying, in this case, I want a precision of two. So well, let's let's see how that works. Okay, and we'll go ahead and run this. And now, if we look inside the file, um, we see that we have a precision of two. You know, so even though there's a star there, I got the same behavior now by by moving the two to another location. Why would we do that? Well, maybe in some cases you want this to be variable and you want to be able to determine what that would be at runtime. So just for fun, we're going to do something really goofy, and I'm actually going to put this line of code inside of a loop, and so we'll just use the index. I and we'll increment it up through nine, so zero through nine. Yeah, that'll be fine. And I'm going to increase my indent there, give myself a little more space. And now I'm going to replace the 2, which was just a constant, with the variable i now. This is really weird, I know. But it's just to prove a point. So now this variable i is incrementing each time that the loop iterates. So we will be printing the same floating point number uh, with using 10 spaces and so on and so forth, uh, or a width of 10. Uh, but the precision will be incrementing each time we do it. Now. This is also going to reveal or enhance rather the argument I was making before about the fact that our floating point values aren't always storing exactly the number that we think they are. So let's go ahead and look at this and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So we'll build the program again, run it, and now let's take a look in this file. Now observe that just as we expected we started with zero uh, positions past the decimal point, so we didn't even see the 3. And everything looks fine, 0 0.3, until we get to right here. And then you'll notice a couple things happened. One, we actually ran out of space, and so this demonstrates the fact that uh, if we go beyond the, the 10 spaces we specified for our number, it will not truncate it. It will still continue to print the number. It'll just go beyond the spaces we'd set aside. So you can think of that width as a minimum that you're setting for the value. But notice here that we're not actually printing a 0.3, are we? It's a 0.3 with a bunch of zeros and then a 1. And if I, I go further and I see there's actually a 2 here. So this should be revealing something to us and reminding us uh, or perhaps demonstrating for the first time that floating point values, they're not storing all of the reals. They're not capable of storing all of the reals, right? There's an, there are an infinite number of values, for instance, between 0 and 1. And so floating point no values are actually just a subset of the reals. And when we try to store a number that cannot be stored precisely using uh, the uh, floating point standard that, that that's employed by our computers, what happens is it picks a number that it can re represent that's close to the one that we tried to store. And so in this case, we can see there's a little bit of a, a rounding error uh, 
that's happening. So knowing that that's happening can help us to not make silly mistakes in our code and uh, leave us with the power to make good decisions and good judgments about these data types uh, that we're going to use. All right, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Until next time.